Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today in gaming, Sony are bringing their games to PC, Raven did another Warzone ban wave, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is coming to more platforms, and much more. Sony are finally bringing more of their first party games to PC. They have a whole slate of games on the way but didn't announce anything other than Days Gone which is launching on the PC this spring. Other titles could include God of War, Demon Souls, Spider-Man, Ghost of Tsushima, or maybe even The Last of Us. Sony have experimented with launching games on the PC recently. Death Stranding and Horizon Zero Dawn both got PC launches after being PlayStation 4 exclusives and they also sold incredibly well. Microsoft Microsoft got wise to the potential of PC ports in recent years and launched their Play Anywhere program. Since then, big franchises like Gears of War and Halo have surged in popularity thanks to getting PC releases. Once you add that actually buying next-gen consoles is impossible right now, it makes a lot of sense to put the games on more platforms. Now all that said, Sony's announcements don't end with software today. They also revealed the PlayStation VR 2 is in development. It's launching next year and will be a more simple and straightforward device than the original. It'll have a higher resolution display, wider field of view, improved tracking, and a new VR controller to replace the aging PS Move wands. VR might still be somewhat of a niche segment of the gaming market, but the original PlayStation VR was a landmark headset. Despite it being a less premium experience than say the Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, the PSVR made several key innovations that other manufacturers have since adopted. The rigid headset strap design is probably the key innovation PSVR is known for, as it greatly improved comfort and made adjusting the headset for different people incredibly easy. Now, pretty much every headset either comes with one or offers a rigid head strap system. Aside from hardware innovations, PlayStation VR also proved that there was a massive market for affordable VR devices. Since launching in 2016, it sold 5 million units, making it one of the most successful VR systems around. In fact, probably more units sold than all other VR systems combined. While comparable headsets were $600 or more, the PlayStation VR launched at $399. Sony could have a killer device on their hands with the PlayStation VR 2 if they can match the quality of the Valve Index or Oculus Quest 2, but at a lower price and with more intuitive user experiences. The PlayStation 5 is an incredible device and could offer some fantastic VR experiences. Raven dropped the Warzone banhammer for a third week in a row last night. Considering the first ban wave of 2021 removed 60,000 accounts, these ban waves are likely massive. I do wonder though how many ban cheaters are already back in the game with freshly purchased accounts. Despite Activision's efforts, it's still relatively easy for cheaters to work around bans. Most cheaters take weeks or months to get banned. Many of these bans are just shadow bans, meaning they simply can't queue up for matches. Shadow bans eventually expire, letting the cheater back into public matches. Bans that do deactivate an account cause the cheater a bit more trouble, but all they really have to do is get onto eBay or any number of account reselling cheat sites to buy a new legitimate account. From there, the cycle repeats. However, to Activision's credit, they do release weekly anti-cheat updates that break whatever hacks are being used. These updates are those client downloads you get when first launching the game that make you restart the client. Unfortunately, these updates are reverse engineered with within hours and all the effective cheats get updated pretty quickly. So in the end, while ban waves are great and their impact is quite noticeable, it's clear Activision has a long way to go if they want Warzone to be a game that stays popular for years to come. Improved detection and faster bans are on the initial roadmap for the game, but so far all we've been getting is ban wave announcements. In other Call of Duty news, Cold War's multiplayer is free to play this week. It goes live with the Season 2 update on the 25th and lasts until March 4th. You'll be able to play the new Zombies Outbreak mode and a selection of regular PvP modes. Double XP will be active for a few days during the free to play week and all progress will carry over if you choose to buy the game. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is coming to more platforms. A new trailer revealed the game is launching on the Xbox Series consoles, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch today. On the big boy consoles, it'll offer 4K. 
but I can't think of a more perfect platform for a Tony Hawk game than the Nintendo Switch. The real question is though, will we ever get the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4 bundle? Blizzard currently has the developers working on the Diablo 2 remaster. They're now considered Blizzard employees, but also seem to be operating as their own studio. Maybe once they wrap up work on Diablo 2, they'll get the green light to work on the future Tony Hawk Pro Skater games. Even if they don't, they laid the groundwork for a hit franchise with the 1 and 2 remake. Another studio could pick up where they left off. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 has been delayed again. The game's publisher, Paradox, announced the delay today. They're moving the original developers, Hardsuit Labs, off the project and are working with a partner studio to get it finished. Development of Bloodlines 2 has been tumultuous to say the least. The game was initially delayed last year following the firing of its narrative lead and creative director. These were very high-profile departures of senior talent that was directly responsible for the original game. At this point, it's unclear what will happen with the project. Paradox have probably sunk a significant amount of money into it already, so it's unlikely they'll scrap it. But if development was going so poorly that they thought bringing in a new studio was their best move, that means things were going, well, really poorly. Google Stadia problems keep getting worse. One of its premier titles, Journey to the Savage Planet, currently has a bug that freezes the game on the main menu. While it seems like a simple bug to fix, Google recently fired the entire development team when they closed down their internal Stadia game studios last week. The publisher, 505 Games, also can't step in to apply a fix themselves because Google owns all of the game's code and data. The remaining Stadia team is working on getting a fix released for the game, but so far that's all they've said on the matter. It's pretty alarming considering issues like this could crop up in other games that were also impacted by the internal studio shutdown. The Crimson Heist update for Rainbow Six Siege went live on the PC test server last night. It adds all the new content coming with the official update like a new operator, rework on the border map, new secondary weapon, etc. It also includes some exciting quality of life improvements like friendly gadgets not getting destroyed by friendly electricity. However, it's also littered with bugs. Players are reporting UI alignment issues, map bugs, graphical glitches, and much more. That's pretty typical of Siege's test server updates. After all, that is the point. Crimson Heist is currently scheduled to launch on March 16th, but that's assuming all of these bugs are fixed by then. If not, the update will likely be delayed. The anniversary collection event for Apex Legends has been extended by a week. This will give players plenty of extra time to finish unlocking the free event packs. You can also outright buy any event items you want without having to gamble on getting them back in a pack. Of all the recent events for Apex, the anniversary collection has been the most well received. You can unlock several items for free by completing daily challenges. It'll end on March 2nd with the extension. While some of the event items might return in Apex packs in the in-game store, Store down the line, now is the only time you'll be able to get all of them at once. Before we get to our final story today, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. If you're looking for more breaking news coverage, check us on Twitter, TikTok, and Level Cap Shorts YouTube channel. We post every day's top stories there first, so if you don't have time for a full video or just want breaking news a little bit faster, check the links below. Epic are settling a loot box lawsuit by paying claimants with the in-game currencies. Epic were sued over their llama loot boxes in Fortnite and similarly designed key crates in Rocket League. Both systems hid the items you could potentially get, so you'd buy a crate and have no idea of what it actually offered. Epic then replaced these crates with ones that tell you the odds in compliance with international laws. Anyone that bought these items will automatically get 1,000 units of in-game currency for the relevant game. In some circumstances, players can collect actual money or other in-game items as part of the settlement. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.